Hi, this is Doug with Design 8 Studio, and regardless of whether you're purchasing your tiny touch plate from Ryan at V1 Engineering Shop or making your own, as I did from components that I already had in my shop, I want to show you this 3D printed magnet holder so that the end of your wire is a magnetic clip. And these uh, tiny touch plates are super affordable on Ryan's shop, but you can also make them very easily on your own. And either way, you might want to use this 3D printed magnet holder. So looking at it, we've got a stainless steel ruler and it came with a hole in the end for hanging it up on something. And I just used a Dremel tool to cut out uh, both sides of that hole, uh, leaving two kind of tongues sticking out, one of which then I could connect to the wire using this little connector here. And uh, I deliberated between using this wire that is made for LEDs, which I think is maybe 24 gauge versus this wire that I think is 20 gauge. And I wound up going with the thicker wire simply because I had a long run of it that was already pulled down to only two wires. But really, I probably should have gone with a thinner wire. This is a very low voltage. And when you go to put the connector, when you go to put this connector on the end, if you have uh, already gone with the thinner wire, then you're good. But if you've gone with this thicker wire, then you'll have to use an X-Acto blade to trim off a little bit of the excess insulation in order to get it to fit into the connector, which is what I did. My, uh, my magnetic tip for attaching it to the uh, bit, I made this with two of these round disc neodymium magnets. I'll put a link in the description for everything, the wire, this kit, this kit, these magnets, a tool like this. Also, my iWIS tool that I recommended in a previous video that I used to put, uh, that I used to crimp these onto, uh, crimp these onto the, the wire for sliding it into this. And I designed a 3D printed uh, holder for this that can be printed in like around six minutes. And so I wanted to briefly explain what, what went on here. This consists of two parts and they are super glued together. The bottom part that you can see down here, it prints with the inside facing up. The top part that you can see here prints with the inside facing down. And so once that is in place, once that's ready to go, I took two of these. There's one of them in the bottom, and there's another one of these. There's one another one of these in the top. The wire is only soldered onto the top magnet, and you'll see that magnet protrudes out so that it can be easily attached. So I took and I roughed up the surface of the disc that I was going to attach to, I roughed it up. In fact, I think I just used the tip, the tips of my um, calipers to just scratch a few marks onto the top of it. And then I used some rosin paste flux, both on the wire, uh, the tip of the wire and uh, a little bit on the scratch marks on the surface of the magnet. And I soldered the, the wire to one of the discs. Now, as you may know, if you subject a magnet to heat, it can cause the magnet to lose some or all of its magnetism. In this case, I was able to get it soldered really firmly without it losing 
uh, much of its magnetism, but I had a concept of using a second disc that had not been subjected to heat to help strengthen its magnetic grip. So the unaffected disc is simply a push fit, a press fit down into the bottom piece. And then the magnet that has the wire soldered onto the back of it gets pressed into the top part. Uh, and then a little super glue around the rim and then simply hold the two halves together until the super glue hardens and it makes this great piece here. Also, uh, I will put my script, uh, I'll make my script available in the description. And let me briefly explain how, how my script is working for this. So whenever the low rider is homed, whenever the low rider is homed to the dual Z, it homes upwards to Z max. And in, in homing to Z max, it then puts the origin, the Z, the Z origin is, is then listed as zero when it's at the top. And the G code that tells the system to probe downward expects to reach a material surface and trigger the probe before it reaches zero. And in my case, it starts at zero, so the command failed instantly. So I needed to put a little bit of G-code in that would uh, reset this, just arbitrarily reset my Z-height up to a positive number, high enough that no matter how far down it needed to probe, it would not reach below zero uh, before hitting the uh, the tiny touch plate and so let me just move these one two three blocks out of the way and i'll show you setting this up i'll just simply attach this here and so uh, let me also home the X and Y. And you can do variations, obviously, as needed. But I felt what would be most convenient for me is to put a probe to touch plate code on my SD card. And so whenever I want to do a probing, assuming that I've got a a full sheet of something, full sheet of plywood or something on my bed. I don't now, but just imagine that I've got a full sheet of plywood here. And if I did, then that full sheet of plywood would have its corner set right where that uh, mark is with a sharpie. That would be the point right there. And I know that for my low rider, once I've honed and my X and Y are at zero, zero. And a moment ago, I misspoke. I said that it sets the home Z to zero. It actually seems to set it to 0 0.5. But I know that when my, when my homed uh, machine origin is set to zero, zero, I know that to get over, to get the tip centered over that corner, I need to move uh, my long axis by 45 and my short axis by four. And so since I do that so much, I built a line into the G-code file that I use for probing to do that for me. And then also in addition to moving over by 45 and moving over by four, it then sets, there's a G-code to set the zero to that point. And then I want to do my, my probing over uh, around in here. And so after it sets the zero at this point, I have another command that moves it to X250 and Y250 to put it over in this area for my probing. So uh, let me show you that uh, in action. I will 
simply go to run a cut job only it's actually uh, and it's on my SD card it's actually just a bit of g-code called probe to touch plate so when I touch this it's gonna say would you like to print this I'm gonna say okay and it first it did that move that got it to here and then it instantaneously set that to zero then it moved over for the 250 by 250 <clears throat> and at that point the G-code file, at that point, the G-code file pauses for, for user interaction, and it's wanting to make sure that I've already got this piece attached, and I do. So I will hit resume, and when I hit resume, it's going to go down and, um, and touch off of the tiny touch plate. And so at this point, it's uh, now asking for, uh, it's now giving an opportunity for me to take this off. Can be parked right here or somewhere around here when not in use. But it's now waiting for user interaction, waiting for me to get that loose. And so I'll say that I'm done by hitting resume. And normally that would be resumed to continue the cutting job. But in my case, this is not built into the header of the G-code file of the job. It's a, it's a separate uh, bit of G-code just sitting on the SD card by itself. So as soon as I hit resume at that point, it's now done. There is another uh, line of G-code in there that's not happening because I've got a semicolon to remark it out. And it's a bit of G-code that would turn on the spindle power, um, but I'm using one that gets manually turned on. If you like our content, please click like and consider subscribing. And until the next video, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio, and I wish you happy making.